All right, I think we're about at the end of this project. We have our puzzle pieces in place. Everything is working. The signs will work. The reset signs will work. The camera moves. We can get blocked in our paths. We can set up some interesting situations. All we're going to add later is some more flavorful bushes or trees and stumps just to add a little bit of extra. We're also needing to add sound. But before we do that, let's get the actual progression system set up in terms of moving between levels and having a menu. So let's jump in and just make this pretty basic at the beginning and we can expand from there. So first things first, we've been using this game layout as our testing area. Now we want to make actual levels. So I'm going to make some pretty simple levels for this demo. You can go as crazy as you want, take it all out, make some really cool complicated puzzles. Mine are going to be very simple and very easy as a demonstration. So let's go ahead and start off with a couple of changes we're going to need to make to the game layout here first. So we will come down to triggers, the triggers layer, make sure it's unchecked, double click, and we are going to add a level controller. So just grab a sprite and we will call this level underscore controller. And you can place it anywhere on the scene, just out of the way. We'll go ahead, make it any color you like. I always use like a hot pink. It just makes it a little easier for me to know which is which. Oh, I'm also going to resize this because there's no need for this to be 250 by 250. I'm going to make it 32 by 32. Feel free to make it any size you like. Make sure you put the origin point where it needs to be. I'm just putting it in the middle. Again, doesn't actually matter. And then I like to just make sure I know what this is when I'm looking. So that is my level controller. Okay, we can close this. And really all we care about with this is the instance variables we're gonna add. So instance variable, add instance variable. We will add current level, which will be a number. And then we will also add next level and click OK. Now we have a way of knowing which level we're on and which level we're going to. The last thing we need to add here is actually a way to get to the next level. And the way we're going to do that is by reaching a chest. So let's go ahead and add in our chest object. So we will lock triggers layer, go up to levels, unlock it, make sure it's selected, double click, and we're going to go down to sprite. Let's call this chest. Click. So come on down to animation frames, right click, import from strip. We will go back into our tiny adventure pack, other, miscellaneous, chest, click OK. There are six frames, horizontal, replace all, we're good. And now we have this cute little chest that is super squishy and bouncy when it opens. That's exactly what we want. So we'll call this open. We will right click, duplicate it, and we will call this one closed. Now on the closed, we can go ahead and just delete all of the frames that aren't the closed chest. Go ahead and move this up to the top. And let's double check for open. Speed of five is a bit slow. Let's check 10. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and select closed, head over to the edit collision polygons, and we are going to go and, like we've done with many others, just shrink this in by two to make sure there's no weird overlappings like we saw with the signs. There we go. Everything gets moved in. The image point, the origin, we will set to the top left, and then we will add one new image point and put that in the middle. So the one thing I forgot to do here is I've done all this on closed but we need to change this to the whole animation. So on each of these, right click, apply to all animations. Right click, apply to all animations. Same with the bounding box. Right click, apply to all animations. That way, everything has the same. Perfect. And now we have our chest here. And what is a chest without some fanfare? So we're gonna open the chest and we're gonna have some hearts flying out. So we're gonna add another particle. Let's go back to objects, double click, Scroll on down to Particles, and we will call this Hearts. Click, and open up in our tiny adventure pack. We go back to Other, select Heart, Open, and we are good with that. We can now close. So first up, we are going to scroll down on the Properties panel, and we have a lot of properties for the particles. So it, first, its rate will be 5. Its cone will be 30. And actually, so we can visualize this because right now if we test it, we can see they're going to shoot to the right. Just so we can visualize it, this won't work when we spawn it in. 
but this will help out for visualizing here. Let's set its angle to 270. That way, as we look at it and test it, we can see that it's going to float up. That size is huge. So first off, actually, I'm heading down. Continuous spray, that's what we want. Speed, let's set to 100. Size needs to be 9. And everything else is pretty good. So now if we preview, we see we get little hearts that kind of fly up and then fall back down. It looks really cool coming out of the chest. So we can turn that off. We are good there. Let's save. Now we need to set the chest interaction. So we will go back into eGame. And this is getting a bit cluttered in here. I apologize. Let's go right click, add group, functions. And I'm just going to drag all of the different functions into the functions folder. That way we can collapse them and not have everything taking up so much space. So let's do that. And I like to do a new group. We'll just call this core because these are just some of the core things that we do, which is the on start of layout and every tick. And we'll hide that up there. Okay, that looks a little cleaner and a little bit nicer. So we will right click, add one more group, and this one will be called chest. And I bet you guessed it, B for a new blank sub event. We're going to double click. We're going to head over into attack box. Double click on that and we're going to see if attack box is overlapping the chest. We also want to see if the chest is closed because if it's already open, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and hit C for another condition. Chest. I spelt it wrong. <laughs> I'll fix that momentarily. Compare the animation that is playing and we want to see if closed is playing. Let me fix this typo. Okay, so if closed is playing, we will set the chest animation to open. We will wait 0 0.3 seconds. Add action, chest. We will have the chest spawn another object. It will spawn the hearts particle on layer we will actually spawn this on the top layer which is where we have our text go as well and it will spawn at image point one then we just need to make sure that we take the hearts and we set their angle to 270 which is of course facing up in the way construct deals with angles and then we're going to want to call a function to go to the next level but first let's just make sure that this works so as the player oh we have an issue here so first things first, its initial animation is actually set to open. Let's change that to closed, and now we should be okay. Walk on over. Oh, I can walk through it. I need to change that. We can hit it. It opens, and yay, we got hearts. That's excellent. So we actually have a couple of tweaks to make here. One, it doesn't have a shadow, so it looks like it's just floating. And two, we're able to walk through it completely, and that's not what we want either. The walkthrough is really easy. We go ahead, select it, behavior, new behavior, solid done that fixes that issue the shadow is a little bit trickier if we zoom into it we don't have a whole lot of space we can actually draw a shadow in ourselves so what we're going to do is double click let's go back into the editor grab the selection tool select the whole thing click once inside and tap up once okay that's pretty easy and then we're going to come on over to our pencil tool we're going to select a black color Make sure that the selection is black and your alpha is at 150. And then all you have to do is draw a line along the bottom here and one, two on the side, just like that. Let's go to open and we are gonna to need to use the selection tool to select the whole thing. Remember, select once to activate it so you can use your arrow keys, press up once. And we're gonna to have to do that to each of these, which doesn't take too long. So we'll move each one up one. Luckily, we have one space above on each of these to fit it in just fine. And now we will grab our pencil tool and just draw in our shadow. So one, two along the side, trace the bottom, one, two. One, two along the side, trace the bottom, one, two. And even when it's skinny, we will do the same thing. So now we have a shadow that dynamically moves with our chest. 
and should hopefully ground it a little bit better than not having one at all. We can go ahead and close this now and let's see how it looks. That looks better. It looks like the sh looks like the chest is actually sitting on the ground. If we hit it, it opens up and the hearts come out and everything is good. The life is great. We can't walk through it. That's exactly how we want it all to work. Perfect. But now it's time to actually make it do something. So other than spawning the hearts, we now want to move on to the next level. So if we're currently on level one, we want to go to level two, obviously. And the easiest way to do that is we're going to make another function. So we will right click, add function. This function will be go to level. Description will be go to next level, category will be game, no return type, we can click OK. And this one should actually be pretty simple. So we can actually go and steal the fade out function from our reset sign. So if we drop down signs, we can come down, we see we have fader here. Let's go ahead, hold down control, drag that down as a copy. Excellent. Now, we instead of waiting and then resetting layout, we're going to keep the weight, so I'll drag that one down as well. But instead of restarting layout, we're going to go to a new layout. So add action, system. You can start typing in go to, and we're going to go to layout by name. You can do go to layout, and that gives you the option of the layout you want to choose. But we want to have this work independently of the level we're on. So we don't want to have to set this time you're going to level two, this time you're going to level three every time. So we will add go to layout by name. So in the quotes, we will do level, underscore, no space, close quotes, space, ampersand, space, and then we will start typing in level controller dot next level and click done. Because on level controller, on each level, all you have to do is place in what the next level is. If I scroll out, we can select it. Oh, I have triggers locked. So here, if the next level is two, we'll just claim this one is one, we will need to move this. But it's going to be looking for the actual level names. So we're going to start changing names of layouts here. So game layout, let's go ahead and just call this level underscore one. We can right click, duplicate, and now it's already level underscore two which makes that really nice. We don't have to go mess with these names. Let's change some things real fast though. So on level two, let's double click, come on in and let's put the player on one of these blank areas. So we'll know we spawned into a different level if we pass through. So let's go back to level one, save and hit play. Actually, before we do that, we actually need to call the function. Otherwise this isn't gonna work at all. So we're gonna go back up to where we hit the chest, add action, function, game, go to level, and we should be good. I might, uh, I think we should be all right, but let's see if that's too fast. So we will go play, and we are currently on level one. We know this because we are spawning down here with all of this stuff. If we come over and hit the chest, we did it, and now we're on level two. The problem is that was a little quick. Um, let's go ahead and wait. Let's drag this wait copy it up above the call of the go to function and we'll set it to one second. So now we should hopefully get a little bit more fanfare before we get pulled into the next level. Let's go on over and hit it. Yay, level fades out and now we're in level two. Excellent. That's how we can do the level transitions. I'm gonna set up some very simple levels. I'll probably make like four or five and then we will jump back in. So this part, I'm just gonna speed through. It's not actually something you need to follow exactly. Make your own levels, enjoy. Uh, here we go.